five days. Would I do five days again? Hey guys, it's day five and we start off by saying this. The weather out here, once again, it's very unpredictable. It switches on you. Last night, muggy, nasty, hot, and uh, we had uh, the few winds that we had were coming from the southeast. Now we wake up to winds coming from the north, blowing from the north, strong winds. Uh, so what do we have in plan, uh, plan for today? We're gonna try to pack up. We have so many things out here. As you can expect in the camp, designed for five days, you're gonna have a lot, but a lot of uh, equipment, food, and uh, obviously trash that you're gonna want to pick up and uh, so you can leave it better than how you found it. Um, our guests right here, I'm sorry to say they, they, they did have a good time, you know, I'm sure they, they, uh, they experienced a, a good time, you know, fishing, uh, but they didn't get the target species that they were looking for. They were looking for uh, uh, some uh, bull reds and unfortunately only on uh, day three and day, no, day two and day three, that's when they were hitting, which was Sunday and Monday. After that, uh, yeah. It just wasn't happening. It was ladyfish, catfish. However, Alex, uh, one of our guests, he did uh, he did land a small black tip shark. That was interesting for me. Um, we were able to get him uh, revived and, and back into the water. That went well. We have so many things to pick up. Let me show you something. There you have, uh, still have to clean this up tear down the toilet uh, uh, the privacy tent over there for the toilet take care of uh, the cleaning the grill and make sure that it's back on my brother's rig uh, we have two generators out uh, so we got to take care of them make sure that they're cleaned up but then it's all the little things that you see around here you know that have to be picked up and then of course what seems like a daunting task is going to be like the, the, the tents, but that's not really a big deal. It's, it's tough because of the wind. Uh, it makes it very hard for you to do stuff like that, you know, because things want to blow around and whatever. But it's not that big of a deal. Um, I'm going to tell you, I think all of our fingers, like Junior, I know my, my brother Junior and I, our fingers are you know all jacked up you know there's always something that 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 happens when you're handling fish handling bait handling your uh, tackle gear um, digging holes you know or doing whatever you have to do you know collecting firewood you're gonna something bad is gonna happen uh, not only that but that salt man salt water with uh, with a sand it really does a number on your skin, does a number on your body. So obviously we do not have, you know, a full shower over here. And we would just use uh, uh, every night or after, before we went to sleep, we would use the water tanks that we have here sparingly, strategically on our bodies. I won't even go into detail because I don't want to, you know, but just in certain spots, you know, to uh, make sure that we would get at least a good night's sleep. But don't expect a full body, you know, shower or a bath or anything along those lines. So if you're planning on doing anything remotely like this out here, just keep that in mind. Um, my feet, man. I, I tried, I, I bought these uh, Soft Science uh, Terrafin uh, boots, which are super comfortable. They're great. You can be in them for a long time. It's almost like walking on, on uh, uh, some of those um, cushy memory foam type uh, mats. But good God, you know, it's, it's if you wear them and they're meant like for you, you're supposed to use them to go into the water um, because they're, you know, they have these vents and I guess these little canals where the water flows out. But damn. Uh, they do a number on your feet like so if you wear socks 
then your feet are all damp all day and stuff like that so I tried using them without socks they did a number on me my my other brother Rick he he bought them too and he bought some for his son and uh, man all our feet are all torn up um, and I'll show you you know what I'm talking about uh, but I think it's a combination of that sand and salt water rubbing um, along our skin you know with that um, material uh, from the shoe and uh, damn it, it's just uh, it, it hurts you know so our feet hurt you know fingers you know fingernails you know uh, little things like that we got you know stabbed by uh, by uh, bait fish and and that's a best case scenario guys because bad things can happen out there out here um, and yeah you know I mean you know God forbid you know a stingray you know God forbid a jellyfish or whatever you get cut or hooked by a by your own uh, uh, fishing tackle so many things can go wrong on day four we had uh, three uh, awesome guests show up uh, to give us some support they uh, made it out here and uh, I have them here with me I want to ask them what the experience was for them uh, before I continue packing up here uh, I got Alex and Alan their brothers Starting with Alex, sure. what, what do you think, man, about the camp? What do you think? It was about, fun. You know, coming out here. It was a lot of fun. It was a little vacation. We relaxed a little. It was good. We didn't catch what we wanted, but it was good. It was still fun. Alan, would you recommend this? You know, for somebody that wants to come out here, probably get off off the grid for a little bit. Yeah. Uh, explain to me, you know, how you would. Uh, uh, what would you do if, if I guess you wanted to do something out here? Mm. Any recommendations? bring lots of food and water lots of water uh, be prepared to not have cell phone signal for so, would you would you say would you say it's important for people to be self-sufficient I mean yes. self uh, sustained yes uh, very important why uh, yesterday there was people here in case you needed help today there's nobody here so you kind of have to know a little bit of what you're doing. Yep. There you go, guys. So this is uh, this is not Club Med out here. Okay. Uh, there is no system of support for you if something goes wrong. So you have to be self-sustained, or at least be prepared. To be self-sustained you got to make a checklist and probably think about everything that can go wrong and even with all that something will still go wrong and you're not gonna have what you need but that's what adventure is all about right adventure is about danger that's part of that's part of the definition of adventure so some good friend told me that so you can't have adventure without a little bit of danger in there or at least the perception of danger and that's okay so we're gonna continue to tear down okay well, goodbye beautiful east cut gonna miss you i'm uh i can honestly say uh not right now but what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna follow my little brother out and uh, he's got a heavier vehicle so he's gonna take a uh, the long route out the longer route and uh, we're gonna see I've never been that road down to that trail so it will be interesting to see how it looks or what he's talking about I just uh, go through that little inlet and uh, get out here pretty quick but he doesn't trust it too much since he's got a diesel much heavier vehicle it is 4x4 obviously but um, it's still you know a different different dynamics you got a longer wheelbase and you know I would just go left right here and uh, take that other route but I'm gonna be following him and he did mention that it was a lot bumpier and as you can see, it sure is. 
but let's see how it looks. I hadn't noticed just how much uh, cactus is out here. I come out here focused up on one or two things and I don't really take the time to appreciate the vegetation and the other things that grow out here. I wonder in the spring you can actually cut some of the fresh fresh uh, uh, cactus uh, and make nopales so if somebody was in a survival situation they could actually make some nopalitos out here or si palitos Gathering, he's gaining some speed. Oh, damn. Ah, he's moving. Yeah. Yeah, he's. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it looks like a bat from hell, man. Uh, for me, I really don't have to. I, you know, once again, the wheelbase on my vehicle is a lot shorter and uh, it's just smooth sailing out here. going to miss the east cut and I will however I do miss my family I miss my wife I miss my children I miss uh, being at home five days would I do five days again probably not not the five days it's just uh, unless you bring extra water and you know you have some other form of support you got to have a I, I guess a better plan it's ice it's having maybe i guess if you had one of those dometic uh freezer slash refrigerators and you had um like a solar powered um system where uh you could power up your fridge that's overlanding that's the extended stay type of uh planning um for other things like the ones that I'm going to be doing which is really like maybe one or two days um, I think investing in a Yeti cooler or something along those lines I, I'm sure that there's other brands I have to do my research if you do know of another good alternative to a Yeti please let me know in the comment section because um, I'm always trying to find out a better way to do things out here uh, yeah ice was a challenge water was a challenge um, because you had to be very wise as to how you're gonna use that water and that's because I was carrying 21 gallons myself plus another five gallons of drinking water plus another 24 bottles of water for drinking the plastic bottles which I'm not a big fan of because uh, they just create more trash and uh, but um, if you're if it's gonna be like one night one day or two days I can yeah that's not a big deal five days however yeah that that's uh, that's a different that's a whole other thing um, that salt water beats down on you man I mean the the, the wind sand constant sand uh, 
the sun beating down on you and then always trying to you're always concerned about something it's it's a uh, it's something else man I really really enjoy it uh, there were times that you weren't even hungry uh, weren't hungry at all I can tell you when you're at home and you're leading a sedentary lifestyle and you're just like huh I'm watching I'm, I'm binge watching something on Netflix and all you're doing is um, thinking about the next show and oh you know I love this episode there's nothing wrong with that I do it myself but you tend to snack you tend to overeat and that is not a good thing when you're out here you're just thinking about survival man did I do this did I do that you know got to get the fire going you know that type of thing um, and uh, yeah it, it's it's uh, it's tough you know it's tough because you're always your mind is always on and you're always on you're always thinking about you know one thing or another now to the fishing part good god man I hooking that 39 and a half inch red <laughs> that bull red was an experience in its own um, that was that was incredible I mean that thing was going crazy and the excitement and just this sense of accomplishment that you you were able to meet this beautiful animal face to face to me that that, that was special and that's you know people do this every year or whatever and you know I don't know if it's still the same feeling I, I just you know, to me, it was uh, it was great. It was, you know, an amazing experience and something that I would uh, really recommend to any of you who've ever aspired to to do any fishing or if you're wondering what it is to hook one of these animals. It, it was pretty special. Um, we didn't let anything go to waste, uh, as you saw. If you've been watching my videos the last few days, we've had quite a number of guests, quite a number of people going by the camp and staying at the camp. Um, you use the resources from the sea to feed the people in camp, okay? Um, I used my tag. Uh, you're allowed one uh, oversized uh, red drum a year and I used it already. Um, so that's it for me in keeping not that I would want to keep another one anyway but I wanted to keep this one and we put it to good use by uh, feeding the troops so that was pretty cool uh, right now we are heading out and uh, a couple of uh, we guys got to dump uh, the trash that we are carrying with us and uh, we're gonna leave that at uh, beach axis 6 um, to try to uh, we cleaned up everything around the camp and uh, just made sure that everything uh, was back uh, to normal we'll leave it as as we found it um, anything else that I have to say well just want to say that I appreciate the people who have dropped by the well-wishers the folks who uh, appreciate this content thank you so much you're the whole reason why I continue to do this um, I am trying to grow the channel so if you do like you know uh, the content then please feel free to like share subscribe all that good stuff comment leave me a comment like I said I, I will repeat this again uh, I, this this channel is not about me just you know teaching someone but uh, I want to learn too, okay? And I, by no means, I am obviously not an expert I, I, at anything, but I do like to do research and I do like to learn. So if you guys have something to provide information, I've had people that have reached out to me and I'm so grateful for you guys. Uh, Mr. Rick Cantu, Mr. Ray Medrano, you know, and I met uh, Julio, Lucero, and Ken, their son good people uh, you saw one of these other episodes 
But that's it for now, guys. I'm wrapping it up. Thank you for watching this very unscripted video.